Welcome back! Right, the news is pretty damn interesting this time. Blizz have got a new control mode for WoW. Steve has filled us in, and a whole bunch more, so let's go. Well, Blizz sure are trying because Shadowlands is free until September 5th and will include level 50 boost, but before you think you're gonna have an army of alts for something, uh, well... No, you can only use this if you have not had Shadowlands on any of your accounts, and you must have had a WoW account before the promotion started. So, yes, this is directly targeting lapsed players of the game. And it's a move with some pretty damn clear logic, especially, you may not have felt this if you've not logged in, which I suspect is most of you. Um, season 4 is the most fun that Shadowlands has been. By far. I mean, that's hardly a surprise given the rest of it, but really, it is just a lot of the bullshit cut out. But I'll say this to Blizz, if any of these lapsed players were to return to WoW right now into Season 4 without a friend to show them the ropes, they will be so confused. I mean, sure, the bullshit stuff in Shadowlands has been somewhat, you know, it's a bit more skippable, it's a bit cut out, and for those of us who already understand it, it's fine, but man, it is a super unintuitive experience for new players. Anyway, Season 4 is a win, so you may as well juice it, and while you're juicing something, why don't you juice your own brain? Brilliant. They are the best way to improve your prospects, develop yourself, and especially too in some really lucrative fields via, of course, their fantastic app and website. They are today's sponsor, and the first 200 to click my link down below will get 20% off. Now, compared to how I learned computer science in uni, their approach is just so much more approachable. It is fun. It is interactive. They teach via nice little quizzes that are just oh, so much more consumable. I mean, I never learned Python in uni. I was all into the, you know, the C++ stuff. So in my spare time, I've just been slowly making my way through the way that they do things. And it's actually really refreshing seeing how they teach these concepts that I'm already familiar with, having had the university experience that I had. This way is actually intuitive and fun. And of course, by having the code in your browser, it ensures there's no setup related issues to get in your way when you're just trying to start off. It is such a refreshing approach. I don't know about you, but I've got so many gaps in my knowledge. You know, I feel like I've fallen off the wagon a little bit, to be honest. Uh, you know, too busy to develop myself, and that's something I regret. Well, Brilliant has actually got me learning again, because with their approach, you don't just sit there and sponge in facts. No, topics click, because you learn by doing. So if you're thinking about your career as one example, I'd say they're one of the best ways to get started in one of those big old high paying fields like AI or computer science rather than a boring textbook. Or you can just do what I'm doing, which is kind of learn for the sake of it, the sheer hell of it, because it's intrinsically worthwhile in itself. So whether you want to learn yourself or perhaps spark a younger mind's journey, visit brilliant.org forward slash bellular warcraft today. And the first 200 to click will get 20% off their annual subscription. Time skip time. Steve has finally weighed in on the issue and confirmed how long the time skip is going to be and why they've done it. So from the end of Shadowlands to the start of Dragonflight, three years passes. However, unlike uh, some expansions, Shadowlands actually did last for two whole years. Now, times can be a bit odd in Warcraft anyway. I mean, per the Sylvanas novel, patch 8.3, you know, the whole thing with Rathian and Azoth, it took place over a few hours, so that's pretty speedy. <laughs> I've got to imagine though the Blizzard almost just want to get a little bit of distance. That idea of, and I know you're going to eye roll at this, and I did as well, but the whole, you know, oh, we've closed the book, or closed the, you know, a chapter of the Warcraft book, and we're opening up a new one. Uh, I think they want a few years to kind of help differentiate that. I imagine they just want to kind of get their shit straight and also give Azeroth some time to breathe, for characters to age, things to settle, because when Dragonflight begins, it will be the 40th year since the Dark Portal opened. A whole decade since Pandaria, just like in real life. I hope you feel old. <laughs> Steve also mentioned characters aging up, and I've got a few things in mind there. Take Salandria. She was reintroduced in patch 9.2.5, and there's a few lines actually from when she first appeared in the Burning Crusade, um, in the Caverns of Time, that almost foreshadow her taking some form of turn, so I think a few years passing will help us with that. There's also some of the younger cast of characters, like your Tellias, your Arators, perhaps, and, uh, well, I mean, Arators probably grown up a wee bit more now, but also Anduin. He will have actually had a few more years to process 
the, let's be real, completely insane life that he's had till this point. As for Lorthamar and Thalysra, who we've since found out are married, well, their wedding is going to be a short story, which of course makes you think, oh, that's a shame, that would have been better as an in-game event. Uh, so it's a shame that that's happening, but Steve sort of did talk to that point as well, because in regards to a world revamp or super major changes, Steve said those things won't happen off screen, right? So it was just clear that those things should be happening in game and that there are things they foreshadowed like uh, say some sort of resettlement of Gilneas, but that when we log in, when Dragonflight happens, those things won't have occurred over the time skip. By the way, go watch our time skip video. It came out yesterday. And in that video, you'll find out how, uh, let's just say we think they have something very different in the works for 11.0. Anyway, Steve talking in those terms, I mean, it almost does make me think that, well, these events will be in the game somehow, right? Which uh, I suppose is kind of exciting. I mean, is that when we see Taldrassil sort of back, or not literally Taldrassil, some sort of night elf solution anyway, when we perhaps see, uh, you know, the Undercity remade a little bit, maybe some world revamp stuff? I mean, if they were to do that, it would be pretty hype. Okay, alpha time, and man, there were a few unexpected things for me this time around. So, Dragonflight testing continues now into its second week of max level stuff. Demon Hunters are halfway in, with the true vengeance tree still outstanding. Mining is also in, giving us a early look at how gathering is going to be faring under the new profession system, and also recrafting, which will let you recraft a bit of gear with different optional reagents. Now that will you know, sort of be a cheaper way to do things such as upgrade the item level of a piece of gear, or perhaps even change its secondary stats, which will be quite nice. We've also then seen that War Mode is getting its own currency, its own vendor, it's uh, getting world quests. I mean, about time, because seriously, you probably didn't play this, but the faction assaults in patch 8.1 paired so well with War Mode at that time. Of course, I only found out because uh, Against Overwhelming Alts was on and it gave you a free bit of raid loot. But it was fun when I went there. It actually created these big open world battles that I suppose you dream of with world PvP, but they never actually happen. And they sort of can around this, uh, around this stuff. So uh, the idea that they're doing this, some rewards, stuff like that, I think that's just brilliant. Hell, there's even a dragon riding talent that lets you ram and dismount another player. By the way, speaking of that, riding has seen further tuning. Uh, now you've got a tighter turning circle at slow speed, a bit of a wider one at the high speeds, and I've got to say that when combined with the camera field of view stuff that they've got, which changes with speed, it actually is starting to have a really, really strong visceral game feel, so that's definitely good news. And it's actually got a whole new feature now, too. This is mainly for accessibility, but I do suspect many people will find it to be useful. And that is the ability to follow along as a little dragon whelp. Now, this is for players who would usually use the slash follow command to follow their friend. Now, obviously, that would not work with writing, so... Props to Blizzard, they found a novel way around this problem where you can turn into a little whelp and that whelp will stay with your friend's dragon as it's flying about. Also, the UI has seen some changes. We've got the first version of the buff and debuff tracking now in, so that's definitely good. It's crazy the game didn't have a good implementation of this for so long, and right now there are some strange things. Uh, the filters, like there, there's no filtering right now, so let's hope that will be there. But now let's get to the things that are a bit more weird and different. So. There's a new casting option called Press and Hold. This will continually cast a spell. So, if, I don't know, if you, say, have Steady Shot and you just held that key down, your character would just keep on doing it. So, uh, I don't know. Are there any one-button specs? Probably not, but weird thing to think about. Now, in case you're thinking that you can make a very intelligent cast sequence macro or something, no, this will not work with macros, won't work with items, and it won't work with clicking. So, Kind of neat for those who want to use it. I don't really know how I would use it, but uh, hey, it's there. Now I'll tell you what I will use, and that's another new feature, and this is a general interact button. You know the way you play a game like, say, Half-Life, and there's just a, a use key? You play a game like Guild Wars 2, and there's just a use key, you know? So whether you're at uh, something you can mine or an NPC you can talk to, you just hit the F key and you'll mine the thing, talk to the person, whatever. It's a staple in more modern games, and World of Warcraft is going to have one now. This key will default to F, 
and the thing that the F key will interact with will be uh, highlighted in front of you. This is just great. I mean, as I said, Guild Wars 2 has done this for a long time. Um, having played Guild Wars 2, let me tell you, this feels really good. It lets you do more things just with your keyboard. So for me, it's a lot more comfortable. Now, right now, it's toggled via a console command, but Blizzard are going to put it in as an interface option. And another thing that is currently just a console command, but will also be an interface option, is action combat. Yeah. Now, this, this might age you, but do you remember back in Legion whenever I did um, sort of my whole, you know, action wow setup with, uh, with console port and dynamic cam and all of that? Um, that was a fun little experiment. And something, and actually when I was doing that experiment, the one thing that I would have goddamn killed for was a general interact key, and we finally got that, so maybe I'll have to do a V2. But anyway, this new action combat system will automatically target enemies as you approach them. It basically lets you walk up to an enemy and hit the attack button. You won't need to, like, to, to do targeting. Pretty neat. It switches targets based on where you are looking. And you know what? I had a quick mess around with this on the alpha, and it feels pretty darn good. I'll say it mostly feels good on melee, but it's just convenient when you're going around uh, around the world content, right? I mean, before the general interact key, and before this, there's a lot of, you know, and I know this, this sounds like a crazy amount of work. Um, just a, a bit more manual sort of footering about, as we would say over here. Um, but the more that the game feels seamless in terms of its controls, the more connected you feel to the keyboard. Now, I very much don't think people are going to be using this in Mythic Plus or in Raids or in, in PvP. I mean, you can if you want. But I think for just generally going around the world content, it's kind of nice not having to think about targeting at all, really. So neat. Well, the news truly does never sleep because there's been a Max interview as well. So, a few tidbits from that, it was with Ian Hesacostas. Paladins! Do you want a reason to show up? Well, you're likely going to be getting a battle res in the next expansion. At the very least, it seems something's going to get a battle res. Ian said, likely Paladin. Evokers? You're going to be getting Bloodlust, so that's pretty neat. And on the topic of the lack of Druid and Priest communication, Ian admitted that, yeah, it ain't good enough, and there's going to be more on that topic soon. Um, I know that at least for the Druids, one of the developers who worked on them actually left the company. So I imagine that probably is causing a delay as perhaps somebody else has got to pick up the project. Now, Ian also asked a question that certainly sparked a debate. He asked what we all think about raid difficulties releasing on the same day. So look, for me personally, would never impact me. I don't mind, whatever other people are happiest with. Um, I suppose for the very competitive guilds, it would lead to a bit of a decision for them, right? Um, they could spend time in heroic splits, but if they do, that's at the expense of myth uh, mythic attempts, if they're all active, you know, on, on the same day. Um, but for a lot of other guilds, though, I think they like maybe just having the first week of a raid being being a bit chill, a bit less pressure, right? Just sort of hang out, learn the fights, get acclimatized. So there's definitely pros and cons, I guess for what it's worth. Max seemed to be in favor of it. But, uh, well, let me know what you'd think if this one would impact you. Next then, for me and the seven other people watching this video who care about season four, Blizzard have taken out the Nerf Hammer again and they have bonked Lower Kara with it. Wicket and the Westfall bosses have taken a few hits. I think Wicket was seemingly the hardest tuned one, but man, things get spicy with Westfall, don't they? Uh, anyway, yeah, so there's that. But also, the Ultiman the Hunter Healer Dispel mechanic called Intangible Presence has been removed from the dungeon. So uh, I suppose that's good for my blood pressure now that I play disc. Yeah, I guess I won't have to learn that mechanic. It's a bit weird. It's one of those ones I think it was fine for organized groups. It was double fine if you used the weak aura, but it was seemingly a bit of a pug destroyer. And to be honest, it wasn't really clear-ish. I don't think it was that clear in terms of its, uh, its spell effect. Now, when I think about what just happened, though, with uh, Sepulchre of the First Ones, I wonder if Blizzard are now extra vigilant about situations where a single player's mistake, definitely not mine, uh, can wipe the whole group. Maybe they're worried about that. I do just kind of wonder, though, could they have hotfixed this with a new, more obvious visual like they did with the uh, Grimrail Depot's final boss? 
Who knows? Anyway, also Upper Kara has saw the chess pieces no longer regenerate health while in combat. I didn't know about this, but this apparently could lead to a rather hilarious situation during Fortified Week and High Keys where, uh, yeah, they, they just heal too much and it would be a bit ridiculous. Now, they've also just nerfed the hell out of trash. They've removed some ushers from lower. They've actually also removed an anti-kiting mechanic, uh, just as we saw them do with, uh, with Season 3 stuff. So there you go. Season 4, it's continually being tuned. And next, all the other news. All right, so uh, Helms. We're on to... Helm Month 3, you can get the Crown of Eternal Winter with Prime Gaming. You just have to log in and claim the thing. And now that the Helms have been given out, I do have to wonder if Blizzard are going to be keeping this up with Amazon, with Twitch. Um, I mean, I don't know, were people, was it, was it worth people just logging in to redeem them? Who knows? Uh, but there are actually a decent few discontinued store pets and mounts that they could wheel out into this. Now, moving back into the game, the auction house also... Uh, yeah, it just kind of awkwardly fell over a few times this week. Blizzard actually had to pull the thing offline. There were more bugs with 9.2.7's changes with the region-wide commodities. And some of them are quite funny. Uh, listings of millions of commodities. Uh, listings up with months or years of duration. Listings with zero quantity that obviously couldn't be purchased because there was nothing unexpected cancellations, and best of all, this is a real doozy, uh, your purchased item not actually uh, landing in your mail. Not good. So expect to see the auction house maybe continue to go up and down until this is uh, finally resolved. And speaking of bugs, well, next we've got a welcome one. I think, if it is a bug, who knows, but it is, the Legion Mythic Plus didn't go away. Legion Time Walking went away, but Legion Mythic Plus is there, so who knows how the hell this happened, but I suppose make the most of it while it lasts. I know there's a few dungeons people have just been trying to farm Valor in and that kind of thing. But yeah, uh, Tashup is still giving out uh, his quest and Keystone and Orbos. I mean, if he's giving out the quest, that's like, you know, 200 Valor for running the dungeon as well as 250 for the quest. Kind of handy. All right, so that's it for the new stuff. I suppose as we round out the week then, man, the general endgame feel is actually emerging. So between the world quests, the sort of like elemental assaults, the uh, the world PvP quests, if you want to have war mode turned on with it now having its own form of progression, the events, I mean, I saw when I was actually, when I logged into um, to the Alpha a few hours ago to see how this new action combat thingy felt, I just noticed the map icon that said, you know, Dragon Racing Derby or something like that. And it seemed like that's what it was, a dragon race that had just spawned in. So, you know, dungeons, they seem pretty strong. Raids, they're usually pretty strong. World content, ah, huh, it actually seems like, uh, like they're trying to, you know, spice it up a little bit. And I certainly do like that. I don't think it's going to suddenly be the best in the genre. No, I don't think that's the case. But I do think it's looking to be a meaningful... Uh, significant evolution over what we have seen or what we've sort of uh, expected in the game thus far. And that really is a welcome thing. And I suppose with all of this stuff, you know, with most of the classes being on, because I suppose when they can call it beta, you know, definitions of, of alpha and beta, they, they, they sure are a hell of a thing, right? But at least what, by, by one of the definitions, I think once all of the classes are in, so I think, well, just the outstanding half of the Demon Hunters, uh, once they're in, then I see no reason why they're not going to label the thing beta. And typically when they do that, they do open it up to more people. So I'm not going to sit here and say, you know, oh, great, it's on track, everything's happy. But I suppose... Let's just let's just assume that that release date leak thing we talked about last uh, uh, last episode was right. Okay, I feel better about Dragonflight at this point in its cycle than I did about Shadowlands this time last year, because even though the testing has literally not been going on for as long by this uh, sort of this stage. Blizzard, I mean, they, they are seemingly being more intentional with it. It's just very nice that on Tuesday or Wednesday, it's all it's pretty much a 100% chance that there's going to be a new build, that Blizzard will be communicative about what's in that build, you know? That stuff, that is pretty good. Now, that's not to discount, say, the Druids, who 
are, especially if you're a feral druid, maybe a bit worried, uh, or the paladins who are saying, look, I don't want the horse. I, I want another way to go slightly faster, please. Because, of course, not only are paladins, um, you know, not the fastest bunch in the world, let's just say, but they are losing the conduits that at least gave them the long horse that they had became used to by, uh, well, you know, this, this point in Shadowlands. So there still are outstanding issues, but... I mean, cautious optimism is not unwarranted at this stage. Um, I don't. I don't think I'm. I'm, I'm biased about that. I, I've generally had cautious optimism, um, though. I suppose for me with World of Warcraft, the one thing that has changed is that me and Matt have been playing Season Four together, and it was quite funny. I forget the name of the site that I was looking at today, but uh, based on player behavior, it's been generating tier lists for things. And uh, it's really good to know that what I'm enjoying right now and what I am considering maining in the next expansion, Discipline Priest, is currently, uh, it's currently, is it D tier and F tier in Mythic Plus and in Raids? So yeah, that's, gr that's really good to know because it means that whenever we wiped to the Westfall boss, I can say it was Class Balance's fault. And it would have been fine if I was holy. Okay, that's probably not the case. Um, but look, I've been loving season four. I really, really am enjoying it. Now that said, this week with the new FF patch, I mean, I'll be probably doing MSQ at the weekend, but man, my Mythic Plus time with Matt has um, kind of evaporated because he is, uh, I mean, he's actually leading content on that side for us this week. And I'm not playing WoW because I like doing Mythic Dungeons with him. Or with Dakor. Point is, uh, a competent tank who knows what they're doing. And that really is the thing. The worst experiences that I have had this Mythic Plus season, I mean, they've been other players. Uh, it only really happened badly in one dungeon, but man, it was a pretty insane situation. And I think that just shows something. And it's why I might talk about loving playing the game and having such a great time playing Mythic Plus. And you might think, oh my god, what has Blizzard, what have they put in his water? Um, yeah, I mean, if you're the healer and your friend's the tank and you're both on Discord and you get along really well and you know what's going on in the dungeon, I mean, as long as your DPS are halfway reasonable, you're going to have an okay enough time. And that's not what many people's experience of Mythic Plus is. So, yeah, bit challenging. I think it just goes to show that maybe the strength of an MMO is that social aspect. But sometimes it does uh, add a fragility to the experience where it all can fall apart. Um, and that sure can uh, lead to an experience that feels unrewarding and feels like where your just time has been wasted. So. Yeah, I'm having an absolute blast in Season 4. I am relishing playing the game. I am loving getting acquainted with this new role and the gameplay of the Disc Priest. But I also get why you may not feel that way at this stage. So there we go. That's the WoW news, as well as my general thoughts on things. If you'd like to support the show, go check out Brilliant, today's sponsor. They uh, are pretty damn well named because they actually are brilliant. Uh, yeah, I don't know about you, but uh, man, I think education sometimes gives learning a pretty bad rap and uh, Brilliant are doing it right. So I think that's a pretty awesome mission that they're on and I've been having a lot of fun there myself. Okay, so thanks to you for watching. Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring and I will see you next time.